All right, I've been researching this Yusuf L video with this gentleman speaking about what is really, really going on here. Y'all need to go to 26 USC code 2032A, valuation of certain farm, et cetera, real estate property. And you can read the entirety of that code. I might have my son read that as well. Anyways, what he's explaining here is that, okay, these agents in blue that we know to be so-called police carrying weapons, wearing uniforms, um, who we also claim are gangs in New York, are really private foreign agents working as corporate policy enforcements for the bank. However, he has managed to break this down to a level that is just so profound it is incredible to think about now the uniforms they wear primarily like in canaanite land canada or over in america is blue right the blue represents the water so they're actually conducting laws or um business on the sea okay the red on their uniform is um the 911 which actually represents the red cross okay now, they are foreign agents registered at the United Nations. So, in essence, they're not even supposed to stop us on the roadway um, unless we um, um, initiate that stoppage. In addition to that, when they put those blue lights on, that's actually a felony. Now, those of you who have been subjected to incarcerations, he's explaining here how each of these judges, these prosecuting attorneys, these lawyers are to have at least a $1 million bond in order to even bring you into the court. And in essence, for regular cases, they need to have at least a $100,000 bond for each case, for each case, for each case. That's why I was saying earlier, I remembered when I was in court, when they asked me a question, I said, I don't understand. Never you say you understand anything. It means you accept the liability for the taxation for the charges because these lawyers, judges, what have you, are liable for the case. Anyways, he goes on to explain that Title 27, Section 280 um, represents um, they're supposed to have a signed document that says they're tax exempt, right? Do you know where that signed document comes from? Guess. I'll wait. Two seconds. Secretary for Puerto Rico. Nobody knows that. Secretary for Puerto Rico, they need to get a signed document from the a letter from the Secretary of Puerto Rico um, saying that they're tax exempt. That's why Puerto Rico had that um, earthquake and that hurricane, whatever, the other day, eh? because they knew all this stuff and they didn't have told none of us. So the laws that they are using, this legislation of Puerto Rico, Title 27, Section 280, which represents the Virgin Islands, America, Samoa, Puerto Rico, Guam, the all caps United States, not the smaller United States. I'm just like, really? So the, the republic that we they're claiming or they talk about is really the because the democracy and the public is it, the republic is one. Right. It's one party. So it's a mob mobocracy or mob crazy, which also means de demos. Demos means demon demon rules. Demons, hence the people are ruled by demons, known as the Democratic Party members, Freemasons, secret societies. Oh, dear God, Deputy Knights Templars, Jesuit Popes of Rome. I'm doing this for, for um, some a lady who had contacted me today about a particular matter. And what he's saying here is this is for all cases. So he's explaining that they're all tax liable cases. So what they do is they put the liability, the taxes on the people, when in essence they're foreign agents, they don't have, their citizenship comes from the United Nations. Their citizenship comes from the United Nations, which is a foreign corporate entity. So we Moors here, we the people are under occupation. Because we're under occupation, we don't have any money. So it goes back to that McFadden case. The McFadden case is a 1932, let me see if I can bring it up, um, 1932 um, Supreme Court case. And the McFadden, um, I'm going to put the description to that in, in this link below. So you can go and read that case, that Supreme Court case. 
and the people, what it basically states is that the people's signature is the collateral. The people are the credit people. The people is, are the credit line. The signature is the collateral. So June 10th, 1933, I'm going to, 1932, I'm going to put the dis link in that description below as well. It's insider trading and all these judges should be impeached. That's what's going on. Title, title 26, subsection um, no, I don't have that one right, but go read Title 26. Um, anyway, so they're private contractors, and they're liable to pay um, the, the taxes, as all is a state and trust, which goes back to Public Law 7310, which is about House Joint Resolution 192, June 5th, 1933. All is trust in a state, because the lawful money, gold and silver, was removed from circulation, Right. So they hypothecated everything with Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He's also explaining in this video how to fill out the 1099, the 1096, the um, W-2, W-9s, and there's a host of other forms as well. I can't, um, it's too much to mention in this video, but I'm going to put the link to this Yusuf L and go and give Yusuf L some notes. Dear God, this, is, this guy was so incredible how he broke this thing down. But he's saying, anyways, you fill out these these IRS forms properly, and you ask them for their TIN and their EIN, and you make them the fiduciary trustees while you're standing in the court. Do not answer questions because you are the king, right? Kings don't ask, don't answer any questions. We ask questions. You know, it's funny. In our culture here, as what you call, um, people call Jamaicans, right? We have a thing in our culture where you do not just go up to someone and start asking them questions willy-nilly. Culturally, we're raised that way. So if you see someone and you just go up and you start, no, that is like, to us, the the most disrespectful thing you can do ever. Anyway, so he was saying that you never um, answer their questions. You just keep asking questions. If they ask you, do you understand? No, I do not understand. No, I do not accept the charges. Anyway, it's Title 42, Negotiable Instruments. That is what um, you argue. The House Joint Resolution 192, um, they're filing quiet titles. They're claiming to be the heir and the beneficiary to your estate when, in fact, they're unlawful foreign entities practicing law without a license, registration, or insurance. As per, they do not have a foreign registration um, statement or an anti-bribery statement, as mentioned earlier. And so, oh, my God, and they are registered. They gave up their proper citizenship, and they're registered with the United Nations. Wow. Form 4490, go and look that up. And you're being coerced to put forth these Federal Reserve notes under threat, duress, and coercion. What he's saying is you should be able to take a $1 note and write an IOU for whatever the amount is of whatever the matter is, and send that off because that is a negotiable instrument. So I was saying earlier that those of you who want to do your own negotiable instruments, he just explained how to go about doing that. That pyramid at the top of that $1 note belongs to us, Moors, as it's all our estate and trust. The estate and trust goes back to the noble Jurelli trust that he set up, the express trust he set up in 1927 for us, Moors. So anyways, just remember to put the stamps on the documents on a 45 degree angle at the back of the document. The last page, turn it over on the back where it's blank, put a stamp in the middle of that page, um, a two cent or three cent stamp, sign over it in red ink um, by John Smith, all rights reserved, whatever the name is, and then put your thumbprint on the corner in red. When you're signing the document that um, you create, that I've sent you all the information for, sign your name, your appellation by John Smith, all rights reserved. Um, if you have an L Bay Day status, put that in there too. You can also put John Smith um, L, all rights reserved. And then you send that over to the commissioner. And what you're going to do is you send them a notice of lien and you send them a notice of lawsuit. And like we did, we did a $100 quadrillion lien because when you realize the amount of fraud you're being subject to, it is absolutely incredible. And he said what these lawyers and judges are doing are gambling their lives away every time they step into the courtroom and then they know it. They just don't tell you. Like, share, subscribe and have a great day.